Hello, GooTube, or YouTube, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, today, we uh, are going to test the... This is that second video I said I was going to make. Um, I'm going to put that new Cree 60-watt uh, equivalent 9-watt daylight bulb to a uh, one-hour or point-of-destruction test on a modified sine wave inverter. One of the things about our house that I set up is that uh, our lights are required to be able to run on an inverter because we uh, we have solar feeding this house and it's on a transfer switch we can dual power the lighting in this place along with uh, many of the outlets <clears throat> but what happens is uh, certain things do not like depending on the power supply they have built into them do not like running on modified sine wave inverters which I'm sorry most of us, we don't have a lot of money. We don't have four or five hundred bucks to blow on a pure sign inverter that only gives us a fraction of what a, a modified sign can give us. So the equipment that we use here has to be able to uh, coexist with, uh, with a modified sign inverter. <coughs> Excuse my cough. And uh, most of the older LED bulbs we have in here, there's actually, there's one up there. I don't know if you can see it. Um, that's just a uh, that's a Sylvania bulb. They they have a pretty decent driver circuit in the in the base of them, and they run pretty much okay with the uh, modified sine wave. But these Cree bulbs, I saw a teardown of the Cree bulb and the components that were working. And one of the things I noticed was uh, a lack of a lack of a lot of heavy components in there. It's a very 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 miniaturized driver circuit and it's transformerless or anything like that. It's basically a small looks like a switching power supply. Most of the time switching power supplies love inverter input. They don't have a problem with it. Uh, but I'm not sure about this bulb. Uh, I've heard mixed stories about it. Some people say only use it on pure sign. Some people say modified sign works okay. So we're going to put it through a one hour stress test and see how high the heat on this thing gets. Because I've already, I've actually burned out, uh, I burned out a pest repeller. These little Black & Decker pest repellers you get at uh, Home Depot and other places. I actually burned one of those out because it didn't uh, have a power supply that was compatible. So ever since then, I test things. And if it won't work on the inverter, it won't work in our house. So let's give this thing a test real quick and let's see what happens. I'll show you the setup in just a sec. Okay, here is the setup. Um, what I have here, I have a small 410 watt inverter. Some of you may recall I reviewed this inverter uh, and I give it pretty high marks and I still think it's a great inverter. I carried it on a trip with me in a truck and it actually performed quite well. Um, this is coupled up to this little table lamp. And this is not the LED we'll be testing. That's just a little 0.9 watt uh, unit just so that I can light things here and show this. But basically this is the beginnings of our rebuild on the solar. It's charge controller. That's just being used as a voltage monitor over there. I didn't want to run it on the big one. I was, I was going to run it on the small one because I use small inverters um, for little loads. Their no load current draw is much lower. so. That's uh, I may not even use that one. I have one other one that's actually even smaller to drive this. So I'm going to switch that out. I will be right back. Okay, I'm back. Um, I went ahead and I switched out to uh, this little 75 watt job I got from Radio Shack. So anyway, that's just uh, give us a easier power curve on the battery since it's not in the greatest shape. I've got to replace that. All this stuff was in storage and I've only recently started getting it to run again. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and move on with the test. The lamp is connected and running. I'm going to shut it off and I'm going to install this. This is the uh, Cree 60 watt equivalent daylight bulb. It runs at uh, 9 watts. So let's plug it in. I will set the timer and we'll see what happens in about an hour. Okay, we are ready to begin testing. There's the bulb up in there. It's all mounted and ready to go. 
So here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. All right. And the test begins. So I will get back to you momentarily, at least through the magic of video, and uh, we'll see how this thing has performed. Okay, it is 11.10 p.m. We started at 10.12 uh, p.m., so two minutes left on the test. And as you can see, unit is still going. So far, no component failures. It's been one hour. This was my goal, was to see what it would do, because I figured in one hour that thing was going to reach whatever operating temperature it was going to be running at. And that's in a 75-degree uh, room. So we keep the house about in that range, 75 to 80. Um, some points to mention. I'm about to go shut it off, um, and I will give you the results of, of what I have found. And we'll switch back to normal room lights. That's, that's the only light right now. It's going through, a, going through a lamp shade, but it's still pretty brightly lighting this room. It's, it's equivalent 60 watt light output, that's for sure. So far, no degradation in light intensity. However, one of the things I have found, it made it an hour, but it runs quite a bit warmer uh, on the uh, modified sine wave inverter than it does on line voltage. I think that's going to reduce its longevity, but uh, I think even if it only runs one year as opposed to, you know, 10, 15, 20 years is what they say on the packaging, I doubt it'll ever really get that far, but even if I get a year out of the thing, hey, that's ten bucks, man. That's ten bucks, so what? You got ten bucks? I got ten bucks in my pocket right now. I can go get another one. Um, the wattage, everything has turned out pretty good. When I put it on the kilowatt the first time I ever tested it, uh, it actually drew a little less than 9 watts, like 8 point something. I can't remember what the other number was, but uh, for 60 watts worth of light output, and it's true 800 lumens output, um, you can't go wrong at that price point. And it says it's dimmable. I don't have any dimmers in the house to test that theory with. I'll have to go get one somewhere. I have a, a motor controller, which is basically a dimmer in a box somewhere. It's 1,500 watts, but um, from what I can tell, uh, that thing is running great. It's just it's running hotter than normal, so I think that's going to prematurely kill it at some point. But it's not uh, it's not running dangerously hot, as far as I can tell. I can still touch the heat sinks, and the bulb itself, the glass, is actually noticeably warmer, but uh, not anything that's... Uh, a deal breaking uh, point on it just yet. I may continue to run it for a few days and see how it does because at that low a wattage that battery will push that thing on into the uh, morning hours then the solar panel will kick in and it'll bring the battery up and that thing just keep right on going so I think I've got a good 24 7 security lamp right there put that on the porch leave the panels engaged when we go on trips and uh, something happens, it can flip to solar and keep going, or it can flip back to grid, because I have a transfer switch that does all that automatically. Uh, right now we have it configured as power backup, but it can be set depending on which, uh, which line in you select and which one uh, you put on the AC. Um, that can either be power backup, or you can have it where it favors the inverter coming off the solar just depending on where you put the input uh, plug you know which one gets AC and which one gets inverter and uh, so far I am extremely impressed with these Cree bulbs um, not too bad they run a little hotter than I've seen actually they now that I think about it that uh, Phillips up there which is now off uh, I think it actually runs a bit hotter than that one does and it's only a 40 watt equivalent but uh, it's one of those snow cone heat sink type, and it you can't hold it after it's been running a while. At least the heat sink part of it. So this uh, this Cree bulb may have it beat. Uh, I'm, like I said, I'm going to do some longevity testing. We'll see how it turns out. But so far, what I've seen, 
it looks like a really good uh, a really good bowl. It looks like uh, the nuts and bolts of it are, are pretty stout. Um, my Phillips bulbs don't get any noticeably hotter running on modified sine wave. The Cree does, but you know, for the price, man, you can't go wrong. I would rather pay <coughs> I'd rather pay that price for a 60 watt equivalent than say 20 something dollars for a 60 watt equivalent. So they've definitely got them beat. And also Cree apparently makes a uh, 60 watt a 65 watt equivalent BR30 flood that only draws nine uh, nine or nine point five watts somewhere around there but it's a warm white so I may be checking into those two because I have some security lights and it says that it can work in damp locations but not wet locations and since my security lights will be up under the overhang I don't think that's gonna be an issue this house has like a foot and a half overhang because of the metal roof they put on it but anyway uh, that's that I'm I'm really impressed with the thing, you know. It it's a little chintzy. It rattles a little bit, you know, because it's not the most tightly assembled bulb, but uh, it's definitely got some go power. I'm very happy with it. I think my purchase was uh, was well spent, even if it breaks, you know, in one year's time. You know, like I said, ten dollars. If you can't come up with ten dollars in a year's time, uh, something is definitely wrong. So, uh, that's pretty much that. Y'all have a good one, YouTube.